making history again. Let's go. Good afternoon and welcome from Kennedy Space Center. I'm Bettina Klan with NASA's um, Office of Communications. What a day. We are here to discuss the NASA SpaceX Demo 2 mission and the return of US human spaceflight from American soil to the International Space Station with astronauts Robert Benkin and Douglas Hurley. The Crew Dragon spaceflight, um, spacecraft and the Falcon 9 rocket lifted today from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center at 3.22 p.m. Bob and Doug are now safely on their way to the International Space Station. To talk more about this historic mission, we have a great panel of, um, of guests, starting with NASA, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein, Elon Musk, the Chief Engineer of SpaceX, Kathy Leaders, Manager of the NASA Commercial Crew Program, Kirk Shireman, manager of the International Space Station, and NASA Chief Astronaut, Pat Forrester. We'll start with opening comments and our presenters, then we'll take your questions. We'll, we'll first start with our NASA Administrator, Jim Bridenstein. Well, thank you, Bettina. Um, what a great day for NASA. What a great day for SpaceX. What a great day for the United States of America. It's been nine years since we've launched American astronauts on American rockets from American soil. And now we, we have done it again. Um, I want to be clear, <laughs> the mission is not yet over. Uh, this is a test flight, um, and so we are at the beginning. But so far, um, everything has performed very, very well, and we are excited about the fact that Bob and Doug, our American heroes, are safely in orbit and on the way to the International Space Station. So I just want to say congratulations to the NASA team. Uh, congratulations to Kathy Leaders, who's been uh, on the NASA side leading um, our commercial crew program all along, and you and your team have done an absolutely marvelous job, and of course, Elon Musk and your team at SpaceX. Um, this, this launch represents the best of everything that America has to offer, uh, but it also represents continuity of purpose. Um, I think to Charlie Bolden, my predecessor as the NASA administrator, who got this program off the ground when there wasn't a lot of political support. And now there is a lot of political support, but it's because we have had success after success. Um, and so this is, a, this is an important milestone for the nation. Um, and I am so honored and, and grateful to have really this brief moment in my life to, to be at the head of this agency. So um, what an amazing, amazing group of people that made all of this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Administrator. Next, Elon Musk. Oh, I'd like to just, uh, uh, yeah, uh, acknowledge the incredible work of the people at SpaceX and, and NASA and everyone in, in cre uh, creating this technology and in, uh, in what has culminated in this incredible launch today of getting astronauts back to orbit after almost a decade. Um, I think this is something that should really get people, I mean, right on the heart of anyone who is, uh, has any spirit of exploration. And the United States is a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. I think this is something that's particularly important um, in the United States, but appeals to everyone with the, uh, throughout the world who has within them the spirit of exploration. So um, I mean, I'm really quite overcome uh, with emotion on uh, this day. It's, it's kind of hard to talk, frankly. Um, there have been 18 years working towards this goal. So it's, it's hard to believe that it's happened. Um, and we haven't quite yet docked at the space station. And of course, we need to bring them back safely. And we need to repeat this, these missions. 
um, and have this be a regular occurrence. Um, so it's a lot of work to do, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's just incredible. I, I think this is something that everyone, you know, it's, this is a, a craft made by humans, you know, for humans. This is like something that I think humanity should be excited about and proud of occurring on this day. Thank you, Elon. Well, next, Kathy Leaders. Well, I, would, I wasn't really expecting this today. I'm going to tell you, we woke up this morning. Um, I think Jim actually called me this morning and said, what, what, what do you think? What do you think? Are we going to fly today? What do you think? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it was at the 605 wake up phone call. But, but um, you know, I think. I didn't know you ever slept. <laughs> but, but I think I'm, you know, um, Jim said it. I mean, I think I was really proud of the team. The team sat there this morning. We looked at the weather. Um, it didn't look great, but we, we looked at the different options that were out there, and we realized how important it was for us to kind of step through this carefully and weigh the, um, the readiness of the hardware and then, you know, not have launch fever but to very carefully assess the situation and be able to clear the gates and the milestones along the way. And the NASA and SpaceX team did a fabulous job with that. And uh, I'm very grateful for the weather clearing one hour before we were getting ready to launch. I mean, all weather constraints were cleared on a day that we weren't really sure how it was going to work out for both our abort track and our launch area, which we have very, very tough weather constraints. Um, but like both uh, Jim and Elon have said, you know, this is a test flight. Bob and Doug are already up there accomplishing a lot of the goals of our test mission. You know, they got to do their far field demos. They got to feel, you know, what it's like to be able to use the touch screens when you're in zero, you know, in zero G. They got to be able to, um, you know, check out all the different parts of the system and, and uh, liberate their zero G indicator, which I think you guys all have and probably have on order right now. Um, and they have a lot more things. They're going to get to try to sleep. I'm not sure how they're going to do that, but they're going to get to try to sleep. And then tomorrow morning we'll be approaching space station and it'll be some of the most important demonstrations that they'll be able to work and on about how do we safely dock to the International Space Station. So I am so grateful and proud of our NASA and SpaceX team. They are still vigilant. They're still on console. We're going to stay. I'm going to stay in the LCC until Bob and Doug get docked to the International Space Station because we're going to stay vigilant until we bring them safely home. Very, very proud of this team. Cannot tell you how happy I am and amazed that we're here today. Thank you. Kirk Shireman. Well, what a great day. Uh, very, very great day for human spaceflight. Big congratulations to Elon Musk and the SpaceX team, and, and of course, a big congratulations to Jim Bridenstine and, uh, and uh, his leadership together with Cassie, Kathy Leaders and, uh, and the commercial, cargo te commercial crew team. Um, just a fantastic day. Really, really happy to be part of it. Um, a lot of the ISS team couldn't be here in Florida today, but I can tell you they were watching it virtually. I, I, they actually had a, la a virtual launch watching party, um, and, uh, and uh, they were very excited uh, to, uh, to see the launch uh, as well. And finally, our international partners. I had the chance to, uh, to get congratulations from, uh, from many of my uh, counterparts across the International Space Station Partnership. Um, they have been a big part of, of, uh, of commercial crew and, and, uh, and the SpaceX uh, uh, efforts along the way. Uh, today, they were watching. Uh, I can tell you they're all very excited about having their crew members fly in the very, very near future on, uh, on the Dragon and come up to International Space Station. Um, today, on board the ISS, the three crew members, Chris Casty, Yvonne Wagner, and Anatoly Ivanishin, are uh, getting ready to have their additional crewmates on board. I know they're very, very excited. In fact, I'd be surprised if they don't have something really special cooked up for them when they arrive. So we'll look forward to that. Um, there's lots of work to be done on ISS, and I know uh, Bob and Doug, together with the, uh, the, the folks on orbit, are really ready to get busy. Um, what you saw today, hopefully what you saw today, was, was really smooth um, and calm. 
Uh, it's kind of like a duck maybe on the water. It looks smooth and calm, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of paddling on going on underneath the surface. Um, and what you'll see tomorrow, likely, uh, we, we certainly expect is very, very smooth and, and nominal. Uh, I just want you to know, though, it's very, very difficult. It's a tremendous amount of effort on the part of the designers, the test engineers, in terms of the uh, ops planners and the operators and even the crew to go make that happen. So uh, smooth and nominal is actually really, really hard. Um, so uh, anyway, with that, it's been a great day. Very, very happy to, uh, to have Bob and Doug on their way to the International Space Station and looking forward to uh, the rest of this test flight. And Pat. I tell you, I am very happy to be sitting here in a post-launch press conference, and that's not something you'll hear me say very often. Uh, probably not as happy as Bob and Doug are right now, but I'm pretty happy. And uh, no doubt I have a group of astronauts jumping up and down back in Houston that are pretty happy too because uh, we promised them some flight assignments, and uh, those are sure to come uh, once we got Bob and Doug up. And so I just wanted to, to just say thanks to the team for being able to do that, to, make, to give these opportunities to our other crew members. Uh, I want you to know that I've been living with Bob and Doug in our astronaut crew quarters here over the last week plus, and uh, I have never seen a crew so calm and focused leading up to a launch as these two were. Now, no doubt that has to do with their experience. It has to do with the training. But I really think it's a demonstration of the trust that they have both in the NASA team and the SpaceX team uh, to get them safely to orbit. Uh, astronauts sometimes are referred to as heroes and no doubt Bob and Doug uh, demonstrated uh, that today. But this is the first time I've ever been in the flight control room as the chief astronaut uh, while we were trying to launch a crew. And I'll tell you, accepting risk on behalf of others is a big responsibility. And I was amazed at what was going on in the loops. As uh, Kirk said, there was a lot of paddling underneath. And I want everyone to know that we were surrounded by heroes on the ground that got us where we were today. Uh, with that, I think uh, I'll say thanks again for getting our crew safely to orbit. We'll look forward to seeing them dock to the International Space Station tomorrow. Thank you. So today um, we have media joining us remotely. So uh, they'll be on the phone and watching on NASA television like everybody else. So to ensure as many people as possible to ask their questions, we're asking our reporters to ask one question to make sure that all of their colleagues has an opportunity to participate in this press conference. Please state your name, affiliation, and whom you're directing your question to. Our first question comes from Miriam Kramer. Kramer. Hi, thank you so much. Miriam Kramer with Axios. Uh, this question is for uh, Elon or for the administrator or both. Um, I was just wondering, so this launch has often been referred to as a moment of hope for the nation, but it's also happening against the backdrop of protests and demonstrations around the country today. I wonder what you want to say to those people out there protesting. Is this launch for them too? Thanks. I'll, I'll be happy to field it. Um, look, this, this launch is for all of America. Um, and we have had moments in time in American history where we've had challenges as a nation. We think back to the 1960s. We think about the Vietnam War and the protests. We think about in the 1960s, the civil rights abuses and the civil rights protests. We think about the, the height of the Cold War. And yet we had this moment in time July 20th, 1969, when all of America stopped, literally just stopped, because we had American astronauts walking on the surface of the moon. And then we repeated that five more times. The challenge is the, 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 the Apollo program eventually ended. But I think what is great about NASA is that we bring people together. Um, everybody loves exploration. Um, and it's not just political divides, it's also international divides, um, and it's unifying. Uh, and I, I would hope, I think it happened today as a matter of fact. Um, all of America stopped. <laughs> I've seen some of the numbers. The amount of viewership on what we accomplished today um, was, was off the charts. And so um, 
I'm, I am hoping that people can see this as something that is bright and hopeful and that people know that tomorrow is a new day and a better day and we're always going to strive to do better. Thank you. Our next question comes from Jackie Waddles of CNN. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, I was curious, this question is for Elon, um, if you had heard from President Trump yet and what he might have told you and what you might have said to him about this. Thanks so much. Uh, well, I've not spoken one-on-one um, -on -one with, with him. I just essentially heard the, the, pr the press conference along with everybody else. So um, we've not uh, exchanged any direct uh, comments. We had a few moments in the firing room there after, after the launch. Um, and I'll tell you that, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. the president is excited. Of course, he congratulated Elon and the SpaceX team. And um, I, thought it was a, I thought it was a good moment. Uh, yes, it was, it was a, with a group of people, but yeah. Oh, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> um, but yes, um, he, he certainly congratulated the SpaceX team and NASA and, and, and everyone involved. And um, yeah, I think this, uh, just to um, uh, echo the NASA administrator's uh, comments, I think this is, uh, this is a day that is, that I think uh, everyone can be proud of that uh, it's, it's a good day to be, it, th this event is something that, that any, all, all of humanity can get excited about. Um, it's just a fundamentally positive good thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we need, we need more positive good things in this world. Our next question is from Joey Roulette of Reuters. Doing this. Um, one question, two part question. First is for uh, Jim Bridenstine. Um, have you heard from your Russian counterparts? I, I know Kirk Shireman mentioned that um, international partners reached out to NASA with the success, and the other is for Elon Musk. Um, with SpaceX's you know, success today, have you heard from your Boeing counterparts, and um, what would you say to them? Thanks. So uh, Dmitry Rogozin is the head of Roscosmos in Russia, and I haven't talked to him but I have seen his public comments. And of course, he was overwhelmingly congratula uh, congratulatory towards NASA and SpaceX. Um, and and <laughs> he, he made some comment about how it's, uh, it's, it's like flying an iPhone or something. And I know I've made similar comments as well, but, um, but he, does, uh, he, he did express that this is an exciting day, not just for us, but also for them. Um, they believe in the partnership. Um, and so I think it's gonna remain strong. The trampoline is working. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, it's an inside joke. I know what you're In, inside about. joke, yeah. <laughs> Our next question comes from Marsha Dunn. For you, um, your company president said right before liftoff that she was super nervous, stomach and throat. Could you talk about how you were uh, your emotions, your feelings leading up to liftoff, and especially seeing them make it to orbit safely. Thank you very much. Was that for me or Elon? Sure. I think it was for Elon. For Elon, please. Yeah. Elon? Marcia, uh, um, if you're still on the line, can you repeat your question? Yes, um, Elon, Gwen Shotwell said right before liftoff that she had her stomach in her throat. She was super nervous. I'd like to know how you were feeling in the minutes leading up to liftoff today, uh, your emotions, your feelings of um, having to stand there and watch all this unfold. Thank you. Well, I mean, just speaking straight from the heart, the, um, on, on Wednesday during the first, first countdown, I'd say that I'd uh, my adrenaline was railed at 100%. Um, and when, when the launch was called off, it went to 0%. <laughs> it was like I just basically collapsed and slept the, the longest time I'd slept in probably a year. Um, then oddly enough, today, I don't know, it felt like the, just the fates were aligned. And I, I didn't, feel, didn't feel nervous, didn't feel, just felt, it, felt like, it felt like it was going to work. And it felt like the right thing was going to happen. So for whatever reason, I did not. I don't feel nervous. Hey, Bettina, can I uh, sure. say something real quick? Um, I just got a note moments ago. Doug Hurley announced that the Crew Dragon is named Endeavor. 
Okay. And cool. we are going to look forward to hearing a few words from them shortly. Thank you. Yeah, they, they, they've been flying it around, actually. They, they, <laughs> it, it's cool that they, uh, they, um, they, uh, they, they, they took it off automatic and, and just were manually flying the craft around. Mm. It's got to be pretty fun, you know, just <laughs> zipping around space and, you know, spacecraft. <laughs> Everyone's childhood dream. Yeah. <laughs> um, next, we'll go to Emery Kelly of Florida Today. Uh, hey, folks. Thanks. <clears throat> thanks for doing this. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm just wondering, with this being the first time um, humans have had a chance to experience flying on a Falcon 9 <clears throat> and in a, a Crew Dragon after all these years of them flying, have you gotten any input from uh, Bob and Doug? Is it, you know, smooth ride? Uh, what, what was it like? Thank you. So I have not heard uh, specifically as to how it flies. Um, uh, I do know that we are going to hear from them soon. Um, I don't know uh, at what point that's going to take place. Patina, I don't know if you have that specific information. No? I don't it, have it, a right. It was a very smooth ride. You can see on, yeah. on, on the, I think on the webcast, it looked yeah. quite smooth. Um, in fact, was a friend of mine who's a filmmaker said, uh, you need to put some shake into the camera to make it look more realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Our next question will be from Paul Brinkman of UPI. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask Elon. Um, I realize the mission isn't over, but um, it's a significant achievement at this point. Um, what's the impact of success for this program on SpaceX as a whole, um, including development of Starship? Well, I, I think this, uh, um, this is obviously it, it, uh, a tremendous accomplishment for SpaceX in partnership with NASA and a number of critical suppliers. In fact, if I think about the total number of people involved in making this mission successful, it probably adds up to 100,000. So I'd just like to uh, just to express a word of appreciation and congratulations again for t to uh, everyone involved in making this successful. Um, and uh, I actually, and just a just special special word to the administrator and Kathy and you know, it's just a everyone involved it's just uh wow um anyway um it, it is it is a little hard to process like i think at this point i am somewhat overcome by emotion to try to come up with uh cohesive you know sentences that make any sense is quite difficult i uh, but i think the th this is hopefully the first step on a journey towards a civilization on on Mars, beca life becoming multiplanetary, you know, based on the Moon and expand expanding beyond Earth, and, and life becoming a multiplanet species. It, it, life becoming multiplanetary for the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth. I think this is hopefully the first step on that journey. Um, it will require a, a tremendous amount of innovation and technology development to make going to orbit and ultimately beyond orbit uh, a routine matter where thousands and perhaps ultimately millions of people can travel to other planets. That's, that's what we really need to achieve over time. We're, and and that, that's, that's obviously a very difficult goal, but that's, um, that's seeming increasingly real with what happened today, that um, getting people to orbit finally after 18 years if we, if we are able to increase uh, the rate of innovation, then life can become multiplanetary. This is the goal we should strive for. I think from a, from a NASA perspective, um, I think what this did for Starship and a lot of others is kind of establish that this is a successful business model. And if we look at how we did commercial resupply of the International Space Station and now commercial crew of the International Space Station, and of course, the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program to deliver payloads to the surface of the moon. And now for the first time since 1972, we have funded a human landing system. And of course, we're very proud that SpaceX is going to be a partner in that development program as well. So, um, so not only do we have it funded, we actually have contractors um, under contract to developing that human landing system. So I think as far as how, how this relates to the Artemis program and and the Moon to Mars program, I think um, 
I think the business model has, has proven itself very successful. We're bringing down costs. We're increasing access. That's going to continue to happen as we on-ramp more partners. And of course, as, as SpaceX and others, they go get more customers. NASA doesn't want to be the owner and operator of the hardware. We also don't want to be the only customer. We want, um, we want SpaceX and others to go get customers that are not us. And, and when all that materializes, um, I think what Elon's talking about here, this vision for humanity being able to live on the surface of the moon for long periods of time and eventually on Mars for long periods of time, that's, um, that's the eventuality of the business model that we are currently developing. Thank you. Our next question is from Chris Davenport of the Washington Post. Oh, uh, thanks guys for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Um, and thanks, Elon, for the trampoline quote. <laughs> that was classic. Um, Elon, if I could ask you, you put the window in the cargo dragon as a symbol of your ambition of, of flying people. Um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about how, over these very long years, you kept your team focused on human spaceflight uh, as the ultimate goal, even though, obviously, they've been working on so many other things uh, along the way. Thanks, and uh, congrats. Yeah, human spaceflight was was always the goal, the the, the fundamental goal of SpaceX. Well, like I said, to uh, create the technologies or help create the technologies necessary to make life sustainably multiplanetary. I can't emphasize I cannot emphasize this enough. This is the thing that we need to do. We must make life sustainably multi multiplanetary. It's not one planet to the exclusion of another, but to um, extend life beyond Earth. We are life's agent in this regard. Um, all the creatures that, and the, the plants and everyone that, that exist here on Earth, we can bring them to other planets. And, and it's very important that we do so as soon as possible, I think, while, while the window of opportunity is open. Um, I, 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 call upon, I call upon the public to support this goal and to think about this goal and think about how important it is and how fundamental it is to the future We've got to get it done. The launching satellites is, is nice, of course, um, and it uh, keeps the, com you know, we've got to bring in more money than we spend. This is important, but it's ultimately uh, all about life beyond Earth. We'll go to our next question. It's Eric Berger of Ars Technica. Uh, good afternoon. That was a hell of a thing to watch. Um, question for Jim today. It's been a little more than eight months since you tweeted about uh, SpaceX and it was time to deliver. Just wondering if you would say that they have delivered or not, and, uh, and maybe do you have a message for other contractors for NASA? Yeah, no, I, I leave it to you to, to bring this up. Uh, we're celebrating here a little bit. I want to be careful we're not celebrating too much until Bob and Doug get home safely. Um, but, um, but no, that's, that's right. Um, you know, there was a, there was a time eight months ago, as you mentioned, where we were having challenges with parachutes. Um, you know, we had, um, a, a, a crew dragon that had a static fire test that ultimately resulted in its catastrophic loss. Um, and you know, if, if you would have told me then that we would be right here today, I don't know that I would have believed it. Um, and, and yes, I sent a, a tweet um, and asked Elon to deliver. And I'll tell you, and I'll tell you the same thing. I told the president, I told the vice president, and of course I've said it in a number of interviews. Um, since that day, Elon Musk and SpaceX have delivered on everything NASA has asked them to deliver on, and, 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 and at a speed that we never would have guessed. Uh, my, my engineering team was saying that this is not gonna be able to be achieved in this amount of time. Um, the amount of parachute tests that we had to get done and how long it takes to get those parachute tests done. Look, we got, we got all the parachute tests done. Um, and, and we are just uh, overwhelmingly grateful, not just for SpaceX and, and, and Elon Musk, but also Airborne um, and the NASA team um, that really went to work um, and, on getting all these tests done. And of course, um, all of the, you know, getting, changing out the titanium, um, all that took time and then doing all the tests after that um my goodness uh spacex really delivered something that is magnificent and that is speed <laughs> without question 
Um, I don't think anybody would have believed the speed with which SpaceX delivered, and they did, in fact, deliver. Kathy, you want to add anything to that? Oh, no. I mean, I think Jim said it really well. I mean, we went through, it wasn't like we didn't have issues. <laughs> we had things we had to go solve, right? Um, and we've learned a ton, and that team, um, the SpaceX team and the NASA team together, working hand in glove, you know, together, solve these problems together, right? We, we tackled them and we solved them and figured out how we we're gonna go fly together. And, um, but without the SpaceX folks making it happen, like Jim said, so quickly, we wouldn't be here today. Thank you. Um, next is Lauren Grush with The Verge. Hi, thank you so much for taking my question. I guess this is for anyone who can answer it. I'm wondering if um, there was anything unexpected during the launch today. I think I heard something on the live stream about some component being lower in temperature than expected. Just wondering if everything went as planned or if you had any, any uh, hiccups along the way. Thanks. Do you know I mean? I'm, so the only, you know, really the count was, I would say, spectacularly quiet. I mean, I mean, everybody said, you know, and then um, probably within, uh, as we were loading the prop, the only thing we, we saw was we saw, uh, it, was, it was actually something we'd seen as we were unloading on Wednesday. Uh, we had a, a sensor that was, um, that was reading um, in a way that we had to go understand why was it reading in that particular manner. And we also had to understand what can happen if it fails. And it was in an area where actually we, um, it's downstream of our fill and drain valve. And so it was, you know, kind of Jim talked before about where do the teams, how do they work together? And one of the things that we've learned on this mission is how to go take a piece of data, like a sensor data, and go understand what is that data telling us, and then be able to clear it, which is really why we were able to fly um, through our understanding of what the issue was, and then turn that around in a very short period of time. And what that takes is two groups of folks that have been working with each other for a while and understand what the vehicle is trying to tell them. But, um, you know, I thought, oh my goodness, we're gonna have this issue. After going through all the weather stuff, now we're gonna have this issue. Um, and, and I was very impressed with how the joint teams together looked at the sensor, understood it, understood the phenomena, and then cleared it and continued on the count. Next, we'll go to Irene Klotz of Aviation Week. Thanks, Tina. Uh, congratulations, everybody. That was super impressive to see. Um, my question, uh, I think, is for Kathy and maybe for Elon. Um, what what has to happen from this point on for you all to feel confident that a August 30th or early September launch of the first post-certification mission can happen? Thanks. Well, you know, I, I'm very proud of the SpaceX team for another reason. You know, we had really wanted um, our crew on vehicle to get into prop checkouts, um, which is really where the spacecraft's assembled, and we're kind of in one of the final acceptance testing modes. And last night I got an email that said, Crew One vehicle is in prop checkouts. They're, they're going through. So, and making sure that the propulsion systems um, leak tight and operating in a, in a critical manner. So I tell you, that's the first thing. The vehicle's got to be ready. Um, the other things that we've got to do is make sure, one, we can, we dock our demo two vehicle, because like we said, this is a test flight, and make sure that we're taking all that learning that we are gonna have from the docking and rolling it into our readiness for crew one. Um, and, then, and then we also have to make sure that we are understanding that we get through landing and make sure that we're taking that understanding and any issues that we have with the landing and then rolling that into crew one. So, um, our teams getting the vehicle ready, and we're also um, watching this demonstration mission and making sure that our learning out of this test flight is then rolled into how we're gonna be flying crew one. So keep watching along the way. It's gonna be like a, we're like a, 
I'd say like a serial, net your, your serial, and we'll be following along as we learn along the way. But um, these test flights are very important for that next mission. Next question comes from Jeff Faust. Hi, this is Jeff Faust with Space News. Um, are there anything, any issues you're particularly watching on the, the Crew Dragon as it approaches the space station? Anything that um, you'll be particularly keeping your fingers across uh, over the remaining hours up through docking? So, um, you know, the big thing, the nice thing about us having the uncrewed mission was we were able to check out a lot of the systems on the uncrewed mission. Um, that had to do with docking. I think everybody saw last spring how successful our crew, our demo one mission was with, through the docking phase. Um, but you always learn something with spaceflight, and now having the crew on board and, and understanding how the spacecraft and the crew operate as a system, and then how that total system then obviously um, works with us approaching station will be another big thing that we're learning, right? Um, and then obviously, you know, people forget, and Kirk alluded to it, us understanding how to be docked with station and operate within station is a big part of our learning for this group. We're going to be, this is also our first long duration mission where we're going to be doing integrated operations with the space station for a long period of time, which is um, which is also going to be a huge learning opportunity for us. So um, these test flights are very, very important for us to not only learn how the vehicle works, but learn how we're operating it. And we've learned a lot about how to try to fly with weather and how to operate with these systems. Um, it's going to be really important for us now to go learn how to obviously do the docking piece, but then learn how to be part of this integrated um, you know, enterprise, that's the International Space Station. And Kirk, you probably could add, there, it's a very complicated, you know, sure. system. First of all, I, I promise good weather tomorrow, Kathy. I, I promise uh, <laughs> no rain showers. We did have a solar flare, but I don't think that'll impact our operations. But uh. there's a series of tests along the way. Just like on Demo 1, there's some additional tests, of course. Uh, Doug's going to take over and fly manually, and the crew, uh, the the crew on board the Dragon, Bob and Doug, man monitoring how the vehicle comes in, and Chris Casty on board the ISS will also be monitoring it. So it really is: how does the vehicle perform? How does the integrated crew, both the crew on the Dragon and the crew on the International Space Station, handle all that? And then, of course, equalizing the pressures, making sure the the, the there's no leaks when it's mated to the ISS. And then finally, just training the crew to come across the hatch and how, how the ISS works and be part of that bigger integrated team. So I think there's a, a tremendous amount of things to learn along the way. And um, we have very, very experienced crew on board the ISS and a very, very experienced crew on, on Dragon. And I think it'll go really well, but, uh, but I'm sure we'll learn a few things along the way. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Jackie Goddard of Times of London. Hello, thank you, and congratulations. My question is for Elon. Um, you said last week that you had told Bob and Doug's two little boys that you would do everything you can to bring them home safely. Um, even with a safe launch out of the way, that must still weigh on you throughout the mission, though. And I wondered if you can share um, some personal insight into what it's like to have that responsibility, not just with your SpaceX hat on, but as a dad. Thank you. Well, it it really hit home, you know, when you meet somebody's kids and and the the vehicle that that you're responsible for, you know, that the, their life's at stake. It, it's it's really hits home. Um, so, you know, uh, there's still so we still got to dock with the space station. We still got to um, still got to return. I think there's an argument that the return is more, more dangerous in some ways than the ascent. So we don't want to declare victory yet. Um, we need to bring him home safely, make sure that we've, we're doing everything we can to minimize that risk of, of re-entry and, and return. Uh, the, uh, 
We were able to do that with the Demo 1 vehicle, so uh, we were able to retire a lot of risk with the reentry there. That That's a big deal, but um, yeah, that, that uh, anyway, you can get, get it choked up here, so it, it it, it's it really this, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm getting choked up, sorry, I, I, I'm not sure I can answer the question any more than that, except, um, yeah, we're going to do everything we can to make sure it gets home safely. Our next question comes from Marina Corin. Hi, everyone. Marina Corin with The Atlantic. Congratulations on the launch. Uh, this is for Elon or Jim. Do Bob and Doug want to dock manually to the ISS instead of letting Dragon do it? Are they allowed to do that, or can they only take over if there is a problem or some kind of emergency? Uh, the, the plan is for automatic rendezvous and docking. That's, that's the plan. Um, of course, uh, if they needed to, to do something manually, they, they could. Um, but but uh, but we're we're planning to uh, to test automatic rendezvous and docking. I just want to reiterate something that um, that Elon talked about. Uh, there is no doubt um, that Bob and Doug are on Elon's mind all the time. But that is not just on his mind. He he has made that throughout the culture at at SpaceX. And we did we did a, an assessment of the culture at SpaceX, and it came back extremely strong. And um, it, is, it is on the mind, <laughs> Bob and Doug are on the minds of everybody all the way down uh, to the line worker and all the way to the top. Everybody at SpaceX knows what, what is at stake here. And um, I will tell you, I was very impressed with what I saw in that, in that safety assessment that we conducted. Um, and I think all of our NASA team was, was impressed with it as well. Um, it's not just Elon, it's his whole team. And he's, he's made that go all the way down to the... To, to, to every person that works at SpaceX. They're called the dads, which may have something to do with their age, but, <laughs> but I won't, I can say sure. that because they're on orbit. So they're, <laughs> and it'll be a few months before maybe they come back and kick me now, but, but yes, but they're called the, the DM2 dads. We should have a dad joke or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would like to add to, to, to that because uh, it plays back to an earlier question about how did SpaceX stay focused on human spaceflight uh, coming out of cargo. And I think part of that is that relationship that was built. I, I know recently over this past year, I think it was 32 straight weeks that Bob and Doug were out there at Hawthorne with the SpaceX team. And they have really built a very close relationship. You can see it in the eyes and, and the smiles when they see each other. And that goes a long way, I think, in this. And so. I think what's really, really cool is that the part number for their seats and their suits has their names in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think, Elon, you guys have done a great job to personalize that you're, they're flying our crews. That culture is not easy to achieve, and it's not easy to get it throughout the whole organization. And the safety assessment that we did um, indicated that that was the case. Well, I, I just want to say that I think we would not have achieved this level of safety without the tremendous support from NASA and your team. This, this, it, this, it, NASA made us way better than we would otherwise have been, and obviously we couldn't even have got started without NASA. So thank you very much for your support. Let's, um, let's celebrate safety when we get them home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. But it's, it's good. Our next question is from Ivan Krohn from AFP. Uh, thank you very much. A uh, question for Elon Musk. Could you expand on Starship development and about when you expect you, you will go around the moon? <laughs> well, I tend to be a little optimistic about schedules. Uh, the, you know. <laughs> um, so, um, but I'm optimistic in general, so I guess that extends to schedules too. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it, I guess I, I, would, I would wish that we could do it in two years. Uh, I don't know, that might mean four. <laughs> but I think, I, I don't know, we'll, I think it's not out of the question that it could be two years. Um, I, I would be surprised if it took more than four. Okay. 
Our next question is from Dave Mosher of Business Insider. Thank you for taking my question, and congratulations on an amazing launch. Um, this is for Elon. You've been working toward this moment for 18 years and have certainly encountered some uh, resistance along the way, I-, I think even at NASA at one point. Um, what would you say to those who doubted SpaceX could do this? Do you have a message for them? And then uh, your last conversation with Bob and Doug, can you, can you tell us what you, um, what you talked about, what you said? Thank you. Um, my apologies, I didn't hear the first question pr- properly. Just yeah, the first question. Dave? Yes, I'm sorry, you couldn't hear the question? Yeah, can you repeat I, it, please? I just, I heard yeah, sorry about that. Um, so th- this is for Elon. I said you've been working uh, toward this moment for 18 years, and you've certainly encountered a lot of resistance along the way, uh, even, I, I think, from NASA at the very beginning. Um, what would you say to those who doubted SpaceX could do this? Do you have a message for them? And then um, what was your last conversation with Bob and Doug like? What did you, what did you talk about? Where was it? Um, thank you so much. It's, do I have a message for those who, what? what? Doubted oh, doubted. Okay. I was like, what? Did you, okay. Um, God, maybe I just blank out the word doubt. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, uh, no, I mean, I, to be totally frank, I doubted us too. So I, I thought we, uh, you know, had maybe, when starting SpaceX, maybe had a 10% chance of reaching orbit. So. So, you know, to those who, who doubted us, I was like, well, I think you're probably right, you know. Um, I mean, the number of times uh, that I, I was told, like, because uh, I was taking the money that I earned from, from PayPal and, and rolling it into to create SpaceX and Tesla and, and, and I was, ended up spending it all. It wasn't the intention, but, um, and, and, and uh, almost both companies went bankrupt, frankly. 2008 was a tough year. Um, you know, it took us, took us uh, four attempts just to get to orbit with Falcon 1. Um, and uh, so, but a lot of times I was, you know, I, I, people would tell me this joke, like, how do you make a small fortune in the rocket industry? You start with a large one is the punchline. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I already heard that joke 12,000 times, you know. <laughs> so so um, anyway, um, and it, was, it, it almost came true. Um, you know, we, we just barely made it there, that fourth launch of Falcon 1. That's all the money we had for that fourth launch. And then, uh, it, and that wasn't even enough to, to save the company. We also then had to win the NASA cargo resupply contract. Um, so that, that came a little after, you know, a little, little bit later, or right towards the end of 2008. Um, those are the two key, key things that, that saved SpaceX. Otherwise, we would have, we would have, you know, not made it. So, um, so yeah, I think those those doubters were their probability assessment was correct, um, but fortunately, uh, Beta smiled upon us and brought us to this day. And Pat, anything else you could add about Bob and Doug right before they launched? Well, I mentioned earlier that uh, that they were calm and focused. Uh, I think that uh, this was for both of them a chance to to get back to space they felt like it was a privilege to represent NASA and the astronaut corps in in this endeavor and they uh, I guarantee you uh, are going to enjoy their time on the International Space Station uh, Chris joked with them when they didn't get up the first time I think the administrator uh, heard this that uh, they were trying to get out of the weekend uh, cleaning that we do on the ISS but uh, they'll be Glad to get there. Glad to come back. We're going to take our last question from Space.com. Hi, this is Hanukkah Weidering with Space.com. Thank you so much for taking my question, and congratulations on an amazing launch today. Um, I'm just wondering if you could talk about uh, what else Bob and Doug will be doing now that they've completed their manual flight test. I, I've heard that they're going to be taking a nap at some point, but what else is on the to-do list for Bob and Doug between now and docking? Well, you know, they, um, they, they did their far field demo. So like Elon already mentioned, they got to um, manually fly the vehicle. Um, they'll be doing another demonstration a little bit closer to the space station. You know, people forget that, um, you know, the reason we, we picked or the FOD picked the uh, Bob and Duck to fly this is because of their experience as test pilots. And, and actually had developed this, the concept of the cadre to have an experienced set of, pilot, of 
crew members working with the companies to make sure that, that they were able to help them as they're working through their, their designs and developing their systems. Um, so this is kind of cool because this is Bob and Doug get to actually fly the work that they've been helping work and develop and say, figure out how's it really working on orbit. And um, so the other thing they get to do is just to be able to be you know, the ECLA system's working, they're getting to see, that are things cooling, Is the, how's the seat feels, how's the suits feel, can you get in and out of the suits, you know, when you're on orbit, how easy are those kind of functions going to be? Um, I'm not going to talk about the the waste functions, but the, that's kind of part of it, and, and then obviously how approach feels with, I know that, that um, Jim was able to use a simulator, but now they've got this big simulator with, that's the International Space Station that they're going to get to be able to actually, you know, come up to and be able to dock and see how that really works and how it matches. Because one of the things that's really important, and we all know it, and anybody, I've, you know, is how does a real thing really approximate what you've been practicing on? for, you know, the last few years. And so they now are going to be able to come back, and for these next crews that are going up, they'll be able to share with them, hey, this is really how it felt. This is how these systems worked. And be able to um, share that experience with the Crew 1 crew that right now is doing their training. So um, they're doing a very, very, very important function for our upcoming crews that will really be the long duration crew members and will be flying to the space station. And I can promise you that the hardest thing they'll do tomorrow is when they're done flying their manual near field flying is to hand it back over yeah. to the computers and not dock it themselves because they are test pilots. And to answer an earlier question, that is exactly what they would enjoy doing. So to give it back will be a little bit hard for them. I did notice, you know, Doug was really good at teaching Jim how to fly it. Mm -hmm. So, yes, <laughs> he helped you, Doc, right? Well, I might have. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, he helped a lot, and it was fantastic. <laughs> well, that was our last question. Some closing remarks from the administrator. Sure. Um, so, again, uh, this is a great day for the United States of America. It does represent um, many years of work. Uh, I want to say, you know, a question came up earlier about you know, um, doubters and um, people that didn't believe that this could have ever happen. Um, there was a day uh, when Charlie Bolden, my predecessor at NASA, as the administrator, um, was trying to get this program off the ground in a significant way. And he had members of Congress on both sides of the aisle that were in opposition to it um, and wouldn't adequately fund it and ultimately um, gave him a hard time about it. Um, and General, Marine Corps General Charlie Bolden persevered and he pushed through and um, it, it, that was the beginning of what we all get to experience today um, and so I want to I want to emphasize that I also want to emphasize you know Pat was talking about how the the Bob and Doug were joking with each other earlier today when when I had the opportunity to be with them and they were joking you know Doug uh, Doug Hurley's last space shuttle mission got scrubbed five times before they finally launched on the sixth time and of course Bob Benkin is saying that Doug Hurley is the jinx here and therefore you know they're not going to launch today either and and to see them loose like that Pat you mentioned that they were loose and joking and and in fact seemingly having fun on the day of launch even though what they're doing is very serious and nerves of steel just, I mean, these are, these are just Amer <laughs> American heroes. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're keeping them in mind. And, of course, Elon, uh, SpaceX, and your team, uh, you know, going back to what we talked about just a few minutes ago, the fact that uh, at SpaceX, you don't call them Bob and Doug, you call them the dads, because that's what they are. They are, in fact, dads and keeping their safety at the foremost of your minds. Um, so really, this is really... A, a great day for all of America. It's a great day for our country. It's been a long time. It's been nine years yeah. since we've had the opportunity. Um, and of course, uh, um, we're, we, we are here now and there's, there's you know, as, as Elon said earlier, there's 
at 10,000 people behind this that uh, that have made it happen. You might have said it. I, I, actually, 000. when you add up suppliers and uh, right. you know, and everyone, it's it's. I think it's probably closer oh, to 100,000. Yeah, yeah. Children. That's right. Yeah. So, um, this <laughs> really is a it's a great day for the United States of America. It's a great day for our international partners. Remember, Crew One is going to be an international mission uh, on the first on the first crew. We're going to have a, a, a Japanese astronaut with us. So, um, so we're very excited about this. I want to say congratulations to everybody. We're not celebrating yet. We will celebrate when they're home safely. But certainly, um, we can we can breathe sighs of relief uh, yeah. every step along the Definitely. way, and that's what we're doing today. So, congratulations to SpaceX and Elon Musk. Congratulations to Kathy Leaders and your NASA team that got us to this position, and we look forward to so many things ahead. So that's going to wrap it up for us here at the Kennedy Space Center. You can continue watching our live coverage until the astronauts reach the International Space Station and docking um, and hatch opening and the arrival of Bob and Doug at the ISS. Docking is scheduled for 1029 Eastern Time. And right after this broadcast, we'll turn it over to JSC. We're going to hear from Bob and Doug during a downlink from the Crew Dragon um, from um, as they orbit the Earth. So we'll have more information. Please stay, go to NASA.gov for more specific information of commercial crew, you go to nasa.gov um, slash commercial crew and um, go SpaceX, go NASA, go Bob and Doug and go America. Thank you.